Hello everybody, this is an introductory video on a series of tutorials that I'm going to be doing about these. Raspberry Pis. This right here is a Raspberry Pi 4. It's awesome. It has a true 1 gigabit connection, USB 3, and can even output two 4K streams. I'm going to be making a ton of tutorials on what you can do with Raspberry Pis. <laughs> Raspberry Pis are great tools for learning computer programming and generally how computers work because you can control electronics with them using the GPIO pins. Any one of these pins you can turn off, on, or pulse. That means you can interface into almost any electronic device just by knowing the pulses required to control it. They're great for tinkering and learning because the entire OS is run off a micro SD card. This means you can just stick it in your computer and back up old versions. So in the event where you accidentally do something that breaks the OS, you can simply put it back in your computer and update it from an old version, restoring everything you had already done. This also means you can store different configurations for different uses for your Raspberry Pi. Also, because they're so low power, they can be used to do automatic tasks on your network because you're not going to be paying but maybe pennies a month. And since the update of the Raspberry Pi 4, we're getting a true gigabit ethernet connection and true USB 3. This means you could easily use them as a file server for your entire network. One of the big issues with Raspberry Pis is they provide very little power over the USB bus. This means many off the shelf mice and keyboards that are wireless will not be able to draw enough power to work and so they'll either have very limited range, I'm talking inches, or will altogether not work at all. Because of this, the majority of these tutorials we will be setting up purely from a computer and SSHing into the Raspberry Pi to do all of our configuration. For most of these tutorials you're also only going to need a Raspberry Pi, micro SD card, USB-C power supply, if you've got the four. One note, you need to check and make sure that the power supply you select will work with your Raspberry Pi. I know for a fact that the power supply is for the Nintendo Switch, although it is USB-C, does not work with a Raspberry Pi as it does not follow the proper standard. However, most chargers should work, but you should always check before buying. And finally, a network cable. Now, Raspberry Pis do have built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, However, I would recommend plugging them directly into your network as it makes debugging a lot easier and you can always then connect them. All right, and that's all I've got for you now. I'm gonna be starting with tutorial one on to how to set up a Raspberry Pi from out of the box without ever plugging in a monitor, keyboard, or mouse. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, bye.